Rub up your engines! Well, Consumer Reports ripped the new electric Chevy Blazer. Good on them, you know, instead of taking all this BS about electric vehicles and pushing them like mad, they actually analyzed one. Basically, they tore it to shreds. And I quote, I couldn't wait to get out of it. They called parts of the interior crazy and unsafe. It's an electric car. You think they'd have electric technology, right? But it has built in Google GM interface, right? They gave up with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which, of course, we've been using for ages. I've been using Android Auto for ages because all my stuff's Android, right? Why would you switch to a system when you got one that people are used to using? I mean, it's just these companies. They got rocks for brains. They really do, you know? Oh, no, people don't like what they're using. Now let's give them something else that they're not used to, you know? Kind of stupid. And of course, they got the Ultium battery system GM's working on. Look what they said about that. Despite being built upon the much hyped GM lithium EV platform, CR found that the vehicle charges more slowly than models already on the market. They also said that the RS for Rally Sport trim is not all that sporty, especially for its $60,000 price point. And remember, they took it off the market as a stop sale for a while because of the problems they were having for these blazers. They had to stop giving them to people, stop selling them. And this this isn't said by people who hate EVs. Think about it, because here's what they said before. We love the Chevy Bolt and Bolt EUV. They like electric cars, they said this. <laughs> <laughs> the Android and the Apple CarPlay. Why would you get rid of something that people like, right? I suppose they caught a deal with Google for it. Who knows what's going on with any of that stuff, right? <laughs> but the overall picture of it is bleak, to say the least. They'll certainly start selling them again, but will people buy them? And I'll bet it's 60 grand a piece. They won't. Just like the Ford Mustang Mach-E, that's really just an electric SUV. That's nothing to do with Mustang. They're not selling well either. Nobody really wants it. They're too expensive for what you get. Here we go. The Fiat 500E. What do people say about it? A stylish EV, but at what cost? It doesn't have that much range. It's not that powerful, and it costs way too much money for what you get. Now, they've started to sell these things in Australia. They sold them in Europe. Now, they're selling them in Australia, and they're going to bring them to the United States. Here's what an Australian reviewer says about them. The EV market in Australia is relatively small, and the 500E finds itself in a segment untouched by other car manufacturers. But the starting price is 34 dollars so 35 dollars for that tiny little car, right? It's only got 117 horsepower. And even in Australia, they're saying, why would anybody buy this thing at this price? They can get... Chinese cars like the Aura, which is $26,000. The MG4, which is $25,700. BYD's little electric car that's $25,600. Oh, the guy says, what do you get for your money with a Fiat? Not much. You're paying all this money. You're getting a smaller, less capable vehicle. They can't go as far. I don't know. I just don't understand why anybody is going to try to sell Fiats in the United States, electric or otherwise. Last year in the United States, Fiat only sold 425 cars. I'm not making this up. A little over one car a day for the whole country of the United States, right? And I'll bet you a whole bunch of people, because the second or third year that the Fiat 500 regular car was introduced in the United States, they sold like 55,000 of them, right? They suckered Americans. Oh, it's a cute little car. And then they found out, oh, it's a Fiat. Oh, it's a piece of crap. Oh, the engines blow up. The transmissions blow up. Oh, they're not very fast. Oh, these cars are horrible. Right? And now they're going to try to sell electric versions in the United States? Hey, it's just insane. I guess they just won't give up. They're the type of people that throw good money after bad. Like, they gambled most of their money away. Let me tell you something. If you buy a Fiat, you're almost always on the losing end of the car business. Even the price alone. All that money for that stupid little electric car. You know? I could see if it was really cheap. What the heck? Cheap. Driving around a little bit, right? But they're expensive for that tiny little car, right? And of course, that doesn't even include destination charges. Things are made in Italy, right? So look at the money you'd have to spend shipping it over. You'd have to be paying extra on that. By the time you're done, it'd probably be 40-something grand for that stupid little thing. <laughs> You know the company screws up in the United States. Come on now. If they only sold 400-something cars last year in the whole country, why they even bother selling them is beyond me. Racing news. You know, Danica Patrick, who was the woman that went with the NASCAR and stuff, right? I don't know. It's funny because the article says the NASCAR driver. She hasn't been a NASCAR driver for a while, and she really wasn't much of a NASCAR driver anyways. When you look at the figures, she had no wins in NASCAR and only finished in the top 10 drivers in 3.6 
6% of her 191 races. So, not exactly a vibrant career, right? Well, she's making the news now because she's had her breast implants removed. Now, I guess she should have done it when she was racing so she'd weigh less, right? Be more aerodynamic, I guess. But <laughs> she waited till her career was over. Right? <laughs> Kind of showing that her career wasn't really racing, but was having her picture taken. It's just amazing. And then they say NASCAR. She's a former NASCAR racer. Be correct about things. Like when they say President Gerald Ford. No, you would have to have said ex-president because he wasn't the president anymore, right? Why do people keep their titles when they don't have them anymore? Is beyond me. Well, she's more aerodynamic now, but it doesn't matter because she's not racing anymore. Now, here's some energy news that fascinates me. This guy decided to see, can you harvest energy below? those giant high tension wires. Power lines on the big giant poles way up in the air. Okay, they have 230,000 volts in them. That's a lot of power. And this guy got wires at the level of a fence and he hooked up equipment to him and found out that he could get a bunch of electricity that way. That's how far the electromagnetic fields go when you got 230,000 volts. I mean, there are some countries that <clears throat> won't let people have cows feed on the grass under them because they think all that electric power is doing something. Many people don't want to live near them. Some people that live near them claim they got migraine headaches. Hey, this guy hooked up these wires at the same length as a fence. He made 240 feet of the wire underneath these giant 230,000 volt power lines, the big ones, right? And even though they're way up in the air, the capacitor they hooked up to charged up to a thousand volts. And the whole thing collected 36.2 joules. So a reasonable amount of energy he was getting free, right? Now, of course, it's totally illegal. You can't be stealing energy from the lines, even though you're not actually plugging something in. If you remember crazy old Tesla, he wanted to do wireless transmission of power around the world because he saw this ability to be able to get the power. The only problem is, you need a tremendous amount of electricity and it only goes a small distance. That was just below the lines. You get further away, of course, than there hardly any at all. If you're ever curious, you can see guys make videos. They'll have fluorescent light bulbs. They'll bring them out there, walk under them, and they can see them glow at night. Right? There's only a certain amount of energy comes through. And one guy who commented on this uh, video said, I'm an electrician and this is not a new idea. Many farmers have been prosecuted over the years from stealing power from electrical companies. The farmers have known about this for a while, I guess, right? I mean, you, whether you're hooking a wire up to theirs or you're taking it by induction, thing, you're still stealing the energy, right? You can't be doing it, right? Maybe just make a fence, looks like a fence, right? But they have it hooked up for power. You can't you're still stealing it. Just because you don't plug it into the wire, you're still stealing the power. But it shows you the power that all those thousands of volts create in electromagnetic fields that you can harvest some of that energy if you really wanted to. But hey, let's face the facts. You steal the energy, you're breaking the law, and you're going to be doing it with very long pieces of wire. And somebody's going to figure it out really fast with drones today. They fly around and see what people are taking and then come after them. Check it out. It's called the Epic Scout. And it's supposed to be an off-road and off-grid trailer you can live in with aluminum and composite body with a steel frame. It has rhino coating on it and it's bonded together instead of screwed so it won't get loose and rattle all over the place. Now it's a 2300 pound trailer so it's not outrageously heavy. Any mid-size SUV or pickup truck can pull it right and it's got all these off-grid capabilities. You can put solar panels and batteries and stuff in it. But one thing I find it sound kind of like a Mad Max type thing. You can live off grid with this thing, right? But a loaded one's over 50,000 bucks. Now, I hate to tell the people who are making this thing, but real off grid people, hey, they're into saving money too. <laughs> And they're not going to get this little box and pay 50 grand for it, right? They're going to make their own, which wouldn't be that hard to do, right? You can get a regular old trailer bed, pretty cheap, and then just build it up yourself with whatever you want. I mean, 50 grand for a little box. It's a lightweight trailer, they call it, right? But I mean, it always amazes me the price points of these things that people are trying to sell. You know, I mean, if they're going for that kind of a market, it's obviously not going to be a family because it would have to be a pretty small family to fit in that thing. Not all that much room, right? I guess people are actually looking for some kind of crazy marketing scheme for something. Uh, and it just amazes me with these trailers. I have people bring me them and I check them out and stuff. And the expense that some of these things, some of these things are over $100,000. And you're like, what makes them worth 
that kind of money. They're just boxes, you know? And the problem is, in the United States these days, a lot of them are really poorly made. I have no idea the quality of this. They claim it's higher, but the ones that people bring me, even the owners say, look at the poor quality of this thing, because they don't pay the guys much that make them, and they had a shortage of labor like everyone else. They'd grab anybody off the street to put them in. They wouldn't Panels would be coming off of them, the bottoms would start being warping, the flooring would be coming off, and the molding on the side would fly off when they're driving down the road, and they'd have cheap Chinese-made tires where the owner said I had to throw those away and get some good American tires on it. So uh, it kind of makes me wonder who's actually buying these things. Are they buying them? I mean, I don't know how long this company's been in business. So it seems to me an awful lot of money for a tiny little trailer. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.